This episode of the Downtown Rams podcast is brought to you by our proud sponsors, Thrive Fantasy, Built Bar, and ExpressVPN. Now, using promo code DTSN, our listeners can get $20 bonus cash on a deposit of at least $20 on Thrive Fantasy, 10% off their Built Bar protein bar order, and 35% off their ExpressVPN annual subscription. Once again, all you have to do is use the promo code DTSN and tell them the Downtown Rams podcast sent you. Now enjoy the show. Aaron Donald creates the fumble. Oh, oh, goes crashing yes, into the sir. end zone. It is intercepted by Jalen Ramsey. Robert Wood, touchdown. Picked off by John Johnson. Touchdown, Tyler Higby. Cooper Cup walks it out of the air. Henderson with a good run and a first down still on his feet. Touchdown, Van Jefferson. Everett in stride. Wow. For the Lombardi. Welcome back, guys, to another Downtown Rams podcast. It is episode 323. I'm your host, Jake Ellenbogen. Unfortunately, unable to join me is Alexis Craft, but she will be back next time uh, when she's done with her uh, witch's retreat or whatever she's doing. Um, but, <laughs> but uh, guys, let's not waste any time. The Rams are moving on 5-2, and 3-0 and at home. Uh, they come away with a 24 to 10 victory over the Bears. Very impressive showing from the Rams. Um, you know, this is kind of a game where you know Sean McVay would talk about winning in all three phases, and uh, the Rams definitely did that. Uh, you know, putting up 14 points in the third quarter was really what allowed them to get that boost ahead of the Bears. Um, the Bears fall to five and two. Um, they lose their first game on the road, uh, so you know, a big loss here for the Bears. Um, I was just overall really impressed with the way, you know, the Rams defense and, and Brandon Staley's defense came out and just, you know, really fired. They threw the kitchen sink at the bears, you know, um, Matt Nagy offensive, uh, minded head coach. He came into this game. I'm sure he wanted to establish the running game. They haven't been able to do it all year. Uh, this game was no different. Three carries from quarter Patterson goes for one yard. Um, and of course, David Montgomery, their lead back, you know, takes 14 carries for 48 yards. He only uh, had 3.4 on the, on the day, uh, yards per carry. Nick Foles throws two interceptions. He had a 66 passer rating, um, no touchdowns, 261 yards. Uh, he went 28 of 40. Uh, This defense really did a nice job. You know, uh, aside from, a few huge grabs, including a 42-yarder from Allen Robinson, a 38-yarder uh, from Cole Komet, and then that 19-yard play uh, from Darnell Mooney. Um, I thought this Rams defense really just stifled the Bears. I mean, they were phenomenal tonight. They really were. Uh, holding the Bears to only three points, I know the Rams win 24-10. to You're probably thinking, if you didn't see the game, what do you mean they held them to three points? That's right. The Rams offense gave up more points than the Rams defense. Um, We'll get into that, but I I definitely want to give credit where credit's due, and the Rams defense deserves credit. Both Jalen Ramsey and Taylor Rapp came down with interceptions. You got to give, you got to tip your hat to Troy Hill, uh, who was right on the money with the tip drill uh, to get it to Taylor Rapp in the red zone. Huge defensive stand there. Um, Leonard Floyd, I predicted he had two sacks in this game, and and he did. Two revenge sacks. Uh, Justin Hollins ends up with a sack. Aaron Donald had a half sack with Greg Gaines. Um, I love me some Greg Gaines, but after watching that play four times, Donald is probably going to be given that full sack, I would imagine, tomorrow when they do um, stat corrections. So, I mean, what what can you say? What, What can you say about this team? Um, I, I'm just, you know, really impressed with the way, you know, their ability to rally back, uh, from last week's really disheartening loss to a rival. Anytime you lose to a division rival, um, especially when it's the 49ers, anytime the Rams lose the 49ers, it's a big deal. And it's hard to come back from that. It's hard to come back when, you know, you have people telling you that, you know, you've been exposed and you're not legit. And, you know, I think the Rams did a nice job of kind of just throwing the naysay- uh, the naysayers uh, to the wayside and just, uh, you know, doing their thing. I-, I thought, you know, they always handle this 
underdog mentality pretty well. Um, but I mean, in this game, surprisingly, they were a six and a half point favorite at the time of the game uh, against the Bears. So I don't know why. Um, coming into this game, I had nineteen seventeen as the the win for the Rams. Uh, I I did not think that the Rams would necessarily blow them out, although I had the possibility in my head because I felt like the Rams were more likely to blow out the Bears than lose the Bears. Um, I felt like there was really no way that the Rams were going to lose two straight. Um, They weren't going to lose at SoFi on this night. They weren't going to lose on uh, primetime. So, you know, I thought just all in all, this is just a really good team win. Um, You know, you get Johnny Hecker, who was just incredible tonight. Um, Hecker boomed some huge punts, Um, you know, 44.2 net, uh, 44.2 net average, uh, five inside the 20. Um, He also punted five of them, and he had a 63-yard punt. This is the the greatest punter I've ever seen, and he might be the greatest punter ever. Um, We are actually witnessing a team like the Rams that may have the greatest defensive player ever and the greatest punter ever on their team. That's pretty incredible um, when you think about it. But again, all three phases, you know, defense played really well. Special teams played well. And then, of course, um, well, Hecker played well, and I thought the special teams did a nice job, the hands team especially, um, you know, with uh, Simba Webster. But the offense, you know, obviously they struggled. Um in a sense that they were moving the ball and they couldn't put it uh, in the end zone as much as they probably should have. Uh, this game should have been probably in the 40s to 10. This should have been a total blowout based on what I watched. But um, nonetheless, they all count the same. And, uh, you know, you have to like the Rams getting over 160 yards on the ground against this Bears defense that uh, Booger McFarland before the game said the Rams can't run on. Uh, so I thought that was... Uh, pretty funny. Um, the Rams also, uh, going back to last year, I, I just found this out during the cal- uh, the telecast. I'm sure you guys did as well. Uh, the Rams wide receivers lead the league uh, in rushing. And Sean McVay used Woods on four carries, Cup on a carry. Um, you know, big shout out to Malcolm Brown getting that touchdown. He's been kind of phased out a little bit in favor of Daryl Henderson and you know, it's hard to argue what the way, Dar- you know, Daryl Henderson's been running the football, but, um, you know, definitely a nice way to bounce back and, and, you know, huge game for, for Gerald Everett and, uh, you know, Josh Reynolds to get in the end zone in this one. Um, you know, they didn't blow up the stat sheet or anything like that because this, this defense, and we, we talked about it on the pregame show, but, um, this, you know, Chuck Pagano bears defense is very good. And Jalen Johnson had himself a game, the rookie corner out of Utah, second rounder. Um, and Kyle Fuller always has himself a game against the Rams. So, you know, you really have to bring it um, against this defense. And I thought the defense did a solid job and the Rams still were able to put up some points. I still felt like the Rams could have done a lot better. Um, looking at Jared Goff, I mean, he's 23-33, has a 108 passer rating, two touchdowns, 219 yards. Felt like he, you know, really missed uh, a few throws that I'm sure he'll want back. Um, you know, you look at the sure touchdown to, to Robert Woods uh, over the top, um, you know, and then the the miscommunication with, uh, you know, Malcolm Brown, which I, I'm not going to blame that on Goff. But then the underthrow uh, to Josh Reynolds. Jared Goff is missing throws consistently. Um, he's also hitting throws consistently. So it's kind of, you know, he, he's really good in the short and intermediate game, but when he tries to test the deep ball, he either throws it too far or underthrows it. Um, I'm waiting for Jared Goff to kind of put it all together this year. Um, I, he's already done that, but I feel like this year, for whatever reason, as good as he is, he isn't quite where he can be. And I think that's definitely fair to say. He isn't quite where he can be. He can be a lot better. I'm excited for him to be a lot better. Um, it's going to be the right time. And I think the thing with the Rams is you have the Miami Dolphins coming up on the schedule. Um, and yes, does it suck to travel across country again for a fourth time this season? Absolutely. But, um, you know, you beat Miami and then you just go in the bye. So you'll have a week off. And I, I think that's when you'll start to see this offense really click. Um, Sean McVay to me gets in his head way too much, although he does seem to set up the run with the pass. Um, 
So there's that. Uh, but, you know, I, I really all in all think that, you know, this team is, is going to get a lot better um, as an offense uh, moving forward. But the defense to be this good already, um, and we're talking week seven um, to play this well, I, I think it's really impressive. Uh, it just speaks to the level of preparation that Brandon Staley has had on this team. And um, I'm just thoroughly impressed. I, I can't stress it enough. Um, you know, coming in this game, you know, the Rams, they averaged 25.3 points per game. Uh, the Bears averaged 21.3. <clears throat> Both fell underneath those. Um, the Rams average scoring margin, they're 10th in the league at 6.3. Uh, they ended up having a scoring margin of 14 points. So, um, you know, the Bears have an average scoring margin of two. So they both finished under that. Um, you know, and then the touchdowns per game, Rams 3.2, uh, Bears 2.3. The Bears had a touchdown. Uh, the Rams had uh, three touchdowns in this one. So, um, you know, I mean, I, I thought the Rams, as much as they had three touchdowns, I mean, I still feel like they could have, they probably left a lot on the field. But at the same time, you know what I'll say, uh, you know, in regards to that is, I feel like Sean McVay played the same game Kyle Shanahan played with the 49ers last week. Uh, you know, why did the 49ers not win by more against the Rams? Why were the Rams constantly in it? Because I think Kyle Shanahan at the end of the day wanted to just really play that style of football. He, he was okay with, as long as they had the lead, he was okay with playing that style of football, um, being more conservative and just forcing the defense to, to make him pay. And, and that's what ended up happening. And I think with the Rams, um, they were obviously more impressive, it, I think, this week than the 49ers were last week. Um, but, you know, I, I think that's kind of along the lines of where Sean McVay went. Sean McVay just wants a W at the end of the day. He doesn't care about style points. And, I mean, if you didn't know that now, uh, he, he, you know, I don't know when you're going to figure it out, but he does not care about style points. Just go back and look at the uh, Washington football team uh, game. Um, so, you know, I, I think uh, just kind of looking at this game, you know, the player of the game, in my opinion, uh, would have to be, I think it would have to be Leonard Floyd. I know it sounds crazy. I think Aaron Donald did all the things that you want to see him do. Um, but I think Leonard Floyd's ability to set the, the, to set the edge, um, and then his two sacks, I think I would net him the player of the game. Uh, he turned it on against his former team. Um, you know, six tackles, two sacks, as I mentioned, three hits on the quarterback. Um, I just think, you know, Leonard Floyd seems to be getting better as a pass rusher. Maybe that's just me, but it just seems like he's getting more confident each week. Um, and you already know what he does against the run. So I think he was huge in this one. I would give him the player of the game um, for the Rams. Uh, I would also give, you know, a, a game ball, if you would. Um, I would, to be honest, I would probably give it to, um, well, that's kind of tough. I, I'm, you know, I would probably give it to Aaron Donald as well. So I'd give, you know, game balls to Aaron Donald. I'd give game balls to uh, Leonard Floyd. Um you know, I, I think that'd probably be it. I thought John Johnson played a good game. I thought Justin Hollins played a good game, aside from his coverage, um, you know, lapses here and there. Uh, Jalen Ramsey played a good game. Um, you know, uh, Darius Williams. I, I don't know. I, I think Terrell Lewis, that huge stop was, was, oh, my God, that was that was a magnificent on fourth down. Um, you just have to credit this this Rams team, you know. Again, all week. It's it's tough playing on Sunday night because all you hear, you know, the rest of the week, because you were on TV in front of everyone, if you lose, you hear about it. And the Rams, they come into this game, they wear their, their blue and yellow uh uniforms and they really gave it to the Bears. This this was a this was a beatdown. This was this was stifling uh on the Rams part. I was definitely impressed with that. Um But <laughs> we have to talk about something. Sam Sloman, that's right. Sloman attempted a field goal and uh, it was blocked. And I know a lot of people were coming to his aid. So, well, I won't say a lot of people, but some people were coming to his aid saying it was blocked. And I'd say, yeah, well, that's his sixth missed field goal in seven games. And that's also, you know, how many blocked field goals has he had? Um, you know, eventually you have to look at a blocked field goal as, well, the kicker, It's he's at fault. I mean, he's got to get the ball more elevated. Um, he kicks it way too short. You know, if it happens once, it's freak. But 
I mean, if it happens consistently, especially when you're not talking about like a 60 something yarder where you need all the leg in the world, um, it's just inexcusable. And I think Sam Sloman, despite the win, uh, probably kicked himself out of a job, uh, this week. And I don't wish, you know, people getting fired on anybody, but I just don't think Sloman has done well at his job. And, you know, if the Rams choose to part with him, I totally think that's the right move. I think you have to go with Kai Forbath or you have to bring in, uh, you know, Hyru Lahu or McGinnis, you know, two guys that were in camp. Um, but I, I just can't trot out Sloman anymore. I, to me, I, I think in the, in this game, I can't stress it enough. There were multiple times in this game where I looked at it and I was like, you know what? It, it Greg Zerline was out there. They're attempting a field goal here, not punting. And, you know, I, I think I just constantly keep saying that, like their, their margin for error is extremely small um, because of just, you know, he doesn't have the biggest leg. He's not reliable um, at all. And I do think it's going to be an issue. If it wasn't an issue in this game, if it wasn't an issue in last game, in your opinion, it could be an issue down the road. It definitely will be an issue down the road in those really close one score, you know, one field goal type game. So the Rams have to get that figured out. I wouldn't stick with him. I don't see the upside at all. Um, I'm not really a huge fan of developmental kickers, but, you know, it's fine if you have a Greg Zerline. It's fine if you have a Justin Tucker. It's fine if you have a Harrison Butker. But if you don't have one of those guys and you have a Sam Sloman who, to me, his ceiling is probably Kai Forbath. So would you spend, you know, all these growing pains and all this time trying to develop a kicker that's ultimately going to be the kicker that you have on your roster with him? No. And and to me, I don't think it's a position where you have to develop a, you know, career kicker. I think you you find guys that work and if they work, they work. Um, You know, it is funny. Cairo Santos, former Ram, uh, did kick for the Bears. Um, So that was that was interesting. So pretty awesome video i don't know if you guys saw it but uh you know the rams twitter um they put out a video of of aaron donald hugging robert quinn like old times it's definitely tough to watch um it was great to watch but it's also tough because you know i loved robert quinn um and you know obviously the back injury really robbed him in my opinion of being what he could have been and in my opinion i think he could have been similar to what von miller ended up being so uh it's always tough there um but you know, this is a huge win for the Rams, 5-2. and two. It's a statement win. I understand, you know, there were a lot of people that were frustrated. They were worried, you know, is this team legit? They've only beaten the NFC East. They've lost the two teams that are good. Um, and the Bears have the same record right now, I believe, as the Bills. So um, they've beaten a good team. I do think the Bears are good. I don't think they're great, but I think they're good. Um, I think this is a fair win. It was a convincing win. And uh, I feel like last week was simply because I think they were tired. You saw this defense come out and set the tone early on. You didn't see that in the 49er game. You just didn't. They were tired. There's been a lot of travel, as we've said over and over again. Uh, This Rams team, you know, has scored 176 points and has only given up 124. I'm extremely impressed with this team uh, defensively. Uh, this, I think it's finally time to start talking. And, and I know they don't have the greatest edge pressure, right? They, they, you know, they didn't have an edge pressure at all against Jimmy Garoppolo and his bum ankle and the 49ers. But I will say this, even without the edge pressure, this team, this defense has so much going for it. And even with linebackers that I don't think are the best, this is a top three defense in football. I, I think you have to put them up there. The Bills have struggled. I had them as number one coming in the year. They've definitely struggled. Uh, you know, um, Eberflus, uh, defensive coordinator for the Colts, has quite the defense out there. Um, so I think you would have to put them there. And I think the Steelers, I think it's right now, it's probably the Rams, Colts, and Steelers as the three best defenses. I think the Bears have a great defense, you know, passing. I think that, you know, they're great at, you know, holding down quarterbacks, but they let the Rams run for over 160 yards on the ground against them. So as far as a complete defense, I don't think they're, they're quite there. And this is not, 
this is not the 2018 Bears defense. This is a very good defense. This is not Vic Fangio's defense. They did not use Eddie Jackson in a way that could disrupt the entire game. Um, they just didn't. And I think that is, uh, that's something that has to be said is Chuck Pagano is a good defensive coordinator, but this team has very similar personnel to 2018. It's not very different on defense. So, uh, I think you have to, to chalk that up to coordinators and Pagano's good, but Fangio is one of the absolute best defensive coordinators. And, uh, it's no wonder why he has the Broncos coaching job, but moving on though, um, you know, we'll talk a little bit about it, uh, to a tag of <laughs> uh, he's making his debut against this Rams defense. I mean, it, Brian Flores is probably at home watching this Monday night football game going, I made a huge mistake. Um, because if this defense is able to get pressure onto a tag of the way they did on Foles, I mean, keep on a lot of those, you know, they had four sacks on Foles. Um, but Foles still, he was only sacked four times. It could have been a lot worse. Um, you know, with two, obviously you have the mobility, but I'm not confident if I'm, if I'm Miami, um, you know, going into this game against this defense, we'll see, we'll see how they, they carry that, that passion, that momentum, uh, you know, going across the seas, but, or not across seas, across the country. But, um, you know, I, I do expect them to do it. And I think, you know, when you're looking at the the standings and you're looking at the playoff race and you see the Rams and you see the Seahawks and you see the Cardinals, and of course, the 49ers are on the outside looking in for now. Um, what's the thing that separates all, you know, all four of these teams in the FC West? And I would say the defense. I say, you know, the Rams have a better defense than any team in the FC West. Uh, if San Francisco had Nick Bosa, you can make the argument, but I think the Rams have the best defense in the FC West, and I think that's going to go a long way. Um, the Cardinals kind of showed you that they are getting better. Seattle is pretty much who we think they are. You know, they're they're a team that's going to score a ton, uh, but they don't have much of a defense at all. So all their games are going to be shootouts, and you know, it, I think in that case if the Rams defense is able to kind of punch him in the mouth, I mean, this we've already seen that the CL Seahawks defense struggles. So if you get up on them, it's going to be hard for them to come back. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of teams in this, this conference that have a shot right now. I mean, if you're, you know, really looking at it, you have the Packers, you have the Seahawks, the, the Buccaneers, the Eagles as your top four seeds, and then the Bears, the Cardinals, the Rams, and that's the end of your playoff uh, race. That if the season ended today, the Saints at four and two would miss the playoffs. Um, then you have the Niners, the three and three uh, Lions, the three and four Panthers, and you know then after that you have the uh, you know two win teams, the one win teams, and you know that's that. But I mean, right now this is an eleven team race. I mean assuming you know whoever wins the the nfc east because none of them are i don't think there's going to be two nfc east teams in the playoffs is barely going to be one um but you know i i think this is an 11 team race the rams really just have to be in the the top seven and they have a tiebreaker over the bears so you know they have the head-to-head tiebreaker over the bears they're gonna have an opportunity to play the buccaneers they're gonna have an opportunity to play the seattle seahawks they're gonna have an opportunity uh to play the cardinals um and the, the niners again so you know we'll we'll see um but it, it will definitely be interesting because you know this this could definitely this could this is huge for the rams in, in all honesty to have this tiebreaker um, they're going to have to win these games. They're very meaningful. Uh, but at the end of the day, I, I definitely think they can do it. I think they are one of the best teams. I know that they sit there at the seventh seed, um, but they are one of the best teams in football. And, and I say that with confidence. And I think they're a team that is scary because I don't think they're anywhere near where they're going to be at the end of the year. So um, that's what I'll say in that regard. Uh, bummer to not see um, Bryson Hopkins get in the game at all. Uh happy to see um Johnny Munt you know getting some action in the passing game and I you know 
Cam Akers and Van Jefferson, I'd like to see them used a lot more than what they're being used right now. So I think after the bye, we're going to start to see the draft picks get more of an opportunity, mainly Van Jefferson and Cam Akers. But, um, you know, after the bye, you're, you're going to have a Sean Robinson likely next week, uh, who, who will absolutely be huge for this defense. The rich are getting richer. Um, and then of course you're going to have Jordan Fuller back. So, I think that's what it comes down to. If you have anything to take away from this game, this defense without Jordan Fuller, without, you know, the potential of getting um Ashawn Robinson back, uh without Ashawn Robinson, you know, without Burgess cuz he went down with an injury. Um this defense hung in there and, you know, really balled out and I mean, they did it against a, a good Bears team that's now 5-2 and two because of them. So, you know, we'll see. Miami's huge, but I, I think that is going to do it uh, for Jake Ellenbogen. Um, she would have been Alexis Kraft, but she is not here at this time. She'll be back soon. Um, this has been the Downtown Rams podcast. It's been episode 323. And as always, I'm going to remind you, if you like what you hear, be sure to tell somebody and be sure to leave a review and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining in and tuning in. This has been the Downtown Rams podcast. This has been a victory podcast. Enjoy Victory Tuesday. Uh, I'm out and, uh, you know, we're on to Miami.